Good evening, everyone. Welcome to SGX SciComm Rubber Futures and Options webinar series. I'm Kenneth Ng from the Singapore Exchange, and I'll be the webinar host and moderator. Today's webinar is on SGX SciComm Rubber Calendar Spread Trading. And the speaker for today is Mr. Michael Sim from Synergy Link Capital. Before I hand over the presentation to Michael, I'd like to give you a short update on SGX. Webinar disclaimer. Please take note of the disclaimer pertaining to the collection and use of information that you have provided. Prohibition of use of information in this webinar by individuals and entities located in certain jurisdictions and disclaimer of guarantees, representation and warranties in relation to this webinar. A copy of this disclaimer is available on our website. There are four webinars in this series. If you have missed any of these webinars, you may visit our SGX YouTube channel for recorded version. Next, I would like to give you a short update on SGX and our products. SGX is an integrated securities and derivative exchange in Singapore. The exchange was formed in 1999 following the merger of the Singapore Stock Exchange and the Singapore International Monetary Exchange, or SIMEX. SGX is also a listed company and our shares are listed on our own SGX Securities Market Main Board. We operate Southeast Asia's largest stock market with a market capitalization of over 1 trillion Singapore dollars. On the derivative market, we offer the most comprehensive range of Asian stock index, currencies and commodities derivatives. SGX acquired SICOM in the year 2008. For some of you here from the rubber industry, you would know that SICOM was the rubber futures exchange in Singapore. After the acquisition, SICOM rubber futures is now traded under the SGX platform. Because of the long history and strong brand name in the rubber market, we still retain SICOM's brand name in our rubber futures products. SGX is headquartered in Singapore and we are supported by nine representative offices globally to service our global customers. SGX's commodities products can be broadly classified into these six broad categories. We have the world's most actively traded iron ore market outside China, where we trade an average of 12 million metric tons of iron ore a day. For more information on SGX commodities products, you may visit our website. SGX SICOM Rubber Futures is the global benchmark for the rubber industry. Our SICOM Rubber Futures prices are used by tire makers globally to price 75% of rubber raw materials. SGX Rubber products can be broadly classified into three broad categories. For exchange traded futures, we offer the world's only US dollar traded TSR20 and RSS3 futures. We also offer the world's only TSR20 rubber options. In addition to exchange traded futures and options, we also have three OTC rubber forwards based on standard Thai rubber, standard Malaysia rubber, and standard Indonesian rubber. Quick statistics on our rubber contracts. We trade an average of 45,000 metric tons of rubber futures a day. On very active days, the volume can be as high as 100,000 metric tons a day or more. We had a record month in March 2020, where we traded a record 1.18 million metric tons for the whole month. This is roughly about 10,000 lots of futures per day. This is a screen capture of the trading activity of our TSR 2020 rubber futures on the 2nd of April 2020. As you can see, all the contract months are traded and with good open interest. This offers hedges the flexibility to choose the actual contract months to hedge the exposure. For calendar spread traders, the trading activities along the whole forward curve presents spreading opportunities. These are our contact information. Please feel free to contact us if you need more information. I will now hand over the presentation to the speaker of today's webinar. Thank you. Uh, warm welcome to everyone. Now, if you indulge me before I start on the uh, proper part of the presentation, uh, I would just like to give you some background from where I come from. Okay. Okay. I work for a firm called Synergy Link Capital. 
uh, we are basically a private limited company engaged in uh, prop trading or primary exchange listed derivative products. Now, we started off in uh, 2011. Um, most of our founders were actually ex Cymex traders. Cymex, in case some of you do not know, is what uh, SGX was called previously. And uh, we came from an era when Open Outcry was still around. So, after everything turned electronic, uh, what happened was most of this trader uh, moved to the electronic media of trading. And uh, at some point in time, they realized the synergistic effect of uh, gathering together, sharing resources and uh, expertise. And that's how Synergy Link Capital was formed. Our team right now consists of about approximately 10 traders, ourselves including. Now, most of us are, like I said, actively trading in the market, although we may trade slightly differing um, asset classes or different approach of trading. Uh, but what makes a team work is basically we all have different kind of experience, backgrounds, and that actually comes to help a lot across the year. Apologies for that. Okay, now one of the newer incentives that we embark on recently is our uh, foray into uh, trading workshops and mentoring programs. We just did uh, two rounds last year. Now the reason why we began looking at this area was uh, that you know, we did some research and it revealed that while there was a lot of uh, trading courses out there, I'm sure you're familiar with the like of uh, those technical analysis or black box system trading. Uh, we felt there was a general lack of um, practical guidance from an active practitioner. So I would like to say we were trying to fill the void there. Uh, but in reality, what we are trying to do is to help rebuild the uh, trading ecosystem, the local one, and in any case, uh, we find. Uh, that the market is actually sufficiently big for a system to sustain itself and we really like to see the liquidity pouring back into the market and that's why we are pursuing this course of action. Okay, and time permitting, our plan originally was to conduct at least two workshop and a mentoring program every year. Um, I'm glad to share with you that we have completed two rounds last year and um, it is still largely a work in progress. Uh, some of these participants are still with us in our mentoring program and uh, but I'm happy to share that most of them um, have seen an improvement in both the turnover and performance of the underlying, yeah, of the bottom line my bad. Well, in any case, if you're interested in this area, you could drop me or kind of a line and we can further discuss this as more detail comes up. As you all know right now because of the lockdown, I do not have any firm date for the next course that we are going to conduct uh, as much as I wish to do it soon. Okay, now um, let's go on to what we are here for tonight. Yeah. Okay, now before we go on to speak about trading, trading strategy or anything like that, I feel obligated that I must share with you how we approach trading, um, both as a trader, individual trader myself, and as a firm. Okay, now, anybody can trade, that's the truth. Okay, but to trade it with some consistency and maybe some degree of success, we need to approach it slightly differently. Uh, perhaps I should say we should approach it with a certain sense of purpose and discipline. Okay, and I'd like to share with you the three cornerstones that guide our trading actions in our firm. Now, they are namely preservation of carbon, consistency, consistent profitability, my button, and finally the pursuit of superior returns. Now, what do I mean? In any consideration for a professional trading account setup, the approach is to view it as a business. What does it mean then? Okay, if you're doing a business, your primary concern will to be your survivability, your continuity. So in that regards, 
priest is always paramount. Okay? And it will take precedence over anything else, even potential profit. Yep. Why? Risk control in trading is never optional. If you don't remember anything else, try to bring this back with you, alright? This is always on the top of our head. Before we consider anything else, risk is always the first thing in our mind. Okay, it's likewise, whatever I share with you today, do remember it comes with a certain risk. I will try to explain it as best as I can. Okay. And the preservation of capital builds on that risk perspective. Okay, being able to always ask yourself the question, am I taking too big a risk? Am I able to trade tomorrow again in the morning if I take this trade and I turn out to be wrong? Now, if you could answer those questions honestly and you do it diligently and follow your own principle of uh, risk management, I think you do okay. Now with preservation of capital out of the way, the next thing comes consistent probability. Obviously, you need some sort of a plan. Um, the hard part about trading plan is actually most of it is done before the actual trade itself. So you have all your research and whatnot and backtesting and, and, and sort of uh, before you actually engage in the trade. Uh, this is done before the trade itself. Okay. And I could share with you that most of our currently actively traded strategies, anyway, in my firm, um, mostly the results of vigorous research and backtesting, that's one. But most of these strategies, or the, rather their starting point, is almost always exclusively based on our observation and, our, of course, our subsequent hypothesis as we engage a market on a daily basis. So it's basically a power of observation thing. And then we're using the mathematical regal to confirm or um, otherwise. And then finally, we formulate or refine in such a way that it can actually work for us. All right, so that's the, that's the part of it. But in any case, whatever you hear or see tonight here, or for the matter, any other trading courses or any other trading idea that you might actually develop yourself the one thing that i like to share with you and i think some of you might already know which is the perpetual constant of the market which is change does not mean that you have an extremely profitable extremely consistent strategy today and it will not change to being otherwise tomorrow and that's the whole point of understanding what you're doing and then knowing that when the conditions of doing so has changed, that we learn and know how to adapt and evolve, and that's where we can go on and develop with the market rather than be left behind. Okay, and finally, my third point for this slide, the pursuit of superior returns. It should always be considered after you've done the first two diligently, and then the patience is the biggest element in this part of our um, trading philosophy. And that's where after you build out your NASIC or you build out a buffer for, let's say, if you're a good quarter, and you can afford to take a slightly more risk than you otherwise would have. And that will only come into consideration after the first two conditions are being met. Now, I know this probably bore some of you experienced traders, uh, but just bear with me as I feel very obligated to tell you this before we talk about trading. All right. Okay. Okay, now, advantages of futures trading. I'm not going to dwell too long on here. Uh, most of you coming into this webinar will already know what a futures contract is, so we'll skip that. But mostly, these five points here about why we trade futures or why we choose to trade futures over other asset classes. Now, first of all, it's the leveraged. Now, one of the biggest advantages of futures trading is the ability to gain leverage because uh, futures is essentially margin. It, um, typically around 5 to 10% of its underlying value. Okay? And that would actually imply a leverage factor of between 10 to 20 times. Um, in futures, there is no short selling restriction. Well, in a, in a literal sense, yeah, I mean, you could as well go long as much as you go short. There's a freedom of expression and a freedom of operating when you want to do something in the futures market. So that's the beauty of it. 
unlike a stock market where you might actually have some short sell restriction, if not um, the complication of having to borrow stocks and stuff like that before you can effect a short uh, sell order. Okay. Now, futures are extremely cheap or rather relatively cheap to trade. It is, uh, of course, this part is entirely yours and your broker's um, negotiation. But I could tell you from a fact, from experience, I've been doing this for the last, uh, th bigger part of the last 30 years. It is the cheapest um, product to actually trade in a unit, in a unit cost wise. Yeah. Diversification. Well, there are as many futures representation as there are in stocks, bonds, or mutual fund. Anything you name it, you can find the equivalent or the um, representation in futures. Meaning to say, you could um, very easily reach the various asset classes via the usage of futures. Okay, and finally, I already explained low cost. Okay, we talk about liquidity. Well, well, I got to be honest. Not everything in the futures market is liquid, but why bother with the illiquid one when we actually see the liquid one? There are plenty there to choose from. Anyway. The next slide is the contract spec of uh, the various rubber contractors in our region. Anyway, the popular ones in any case. I think uh, kind of gone through the SGX one. Well, we don't trade in isolation. So do know in Tokyo, in Tokom, we have the RSS3 contract trading as well. As much as it's in Shanghai and uh, INE, which is also essentially China, which trades an identical of TSR20 rubber contract. I will go into detail later about the significance of uh, the role or rather the role of all these um, other exchanges or the product in these other exchanges uh, does and how it affects your trading on Simex Raba. Now we talk about the advantages in trading futures. By extension, future spread trading is more of the same and is actually an extension of the same principle that makes outright futures trading interesting or rather attractive yeah my bad okay so but let me explain what is future spread trading a spread is essentially a uh, long and a short in uh, two futures they may or may not be identical Identical in this, like, for example, if I was doing a rubber spread, I could be doing it in different months. So, identical in the sense, the same underlying product, but different in the expiration month. Okay. Or I could be doing it in a very different contract. Uh, like, for example, I could be doing like a Cymex TSR 20 rubber against a Shanghai RSS uh, rubber. And that is like sort of like also a spread. But there are other considerations on top of just. Um, a simple spread when, when you talk about calendar spread. So tonight we are going to talk more about calendar spread, meaning to say it will be simultaneous purchase and sale of the same product in different segments of the calendar. Now, why do we do this uh, spread and why have I uh, decided to choose this uh, topic? Well, first of all, is the risk profile. When you are doing a spread in that manner, a calendar spread, if you indulge me, what happens is you actually lower your risk considerably. Well, at the very least, you have all, but not, if not all, but eliminate the systematic risk. Okay, that's one. Uh, what I mean by systematic risk, in case, um, just just to just to clarify, um, you guys have heard of uh, gap risk, right? Meaning, let's say if you go to bed tonight, you have a position in the market, and overnight. That could be a big news that moved the market in a certain way. May or may not be favorable to you. But let's say you will only have an outright position. Now, it could turn out one or two ways because your exposure is, is, is definite. So there is no like hedges when this happens. Now, when you do a calendar spread, what happens is, let's say if you're long um, April rubber and you're short the May rubber in a calendar spread, if for some reason, the market crash, market gap up for whatever reason. Now, you could expect both the May 
and the April rubber to move more or less in line, if not in the same direction. So in that sense, okay, it's, it's lowering the responsibility for you and make you sleep better at night too. Now, on top of that, when you actually enter into the spread, you are actually lowering your margin requirement. Approximately, um, it's about 3 to 1 for the rubber. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, the rubber outright is about 600 odd US dollars per contract. Whereas if you were to do a spread, it is probably closer to 200 US dollars per spread. Now, in a lot of ways, when you do a calendar spread trade, all right, what you are actually trying to gun for here is to recognize distortion in value and you're trying to take advantage of buying the cheaper leg and selling the relatively more expensive leg. Now that is assuming that the market holds a certain correlation in a certain determinable and consistent way. Okay, so for rubber which is actually a relatively stable contract in terms of its supply uh, and demand cycle, uh, the intra-month term spread is actually very, very consistent and stable for most of the time anyway. Okay, So you could see this as a, actually a lower risk directional bets if you like. Okay, to further illustrate uh, what I just said in words, when you do a calendar spread, okay, what you do is you buy one and you sell another in different months. So for the case of rubber or commodity in general, when we talk about a buy spread, we are buying the front month and we are selling the back month. It does not have to be a consecutive, meaning I could buy May, I could sell July, I could buy May, sell June, I could even buy May and sell November. In any case, there are 12 months out there that you can trade. So the next question is then the choice and the trigger of what or how we do it. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. Let me just give you some mechanics of how we derive the uh, spread price. It's simply the price of the front month minus the price of the farm month contract. So look at this slide where May is at 112.7 and the June is at 114.2. Taking one simply uh, subtracting it from the other. We get it the negative 1.5. Okay, and this is the spread. We call it May June spread. Now, when you buy a spread, figuratively speaking, if you buy a spread, you buy the front, you sell the back month. So, what are you gunning for here? Now, you're hoping at the point of your entry that eventually. The front month will go up a lot more than the back month. Or you're hoping that the front month will go up and the back month will actually kind of come off. That will be even better for you. Okay? And the reverse is true for a sales spread where you sell the front and you buy the back. Now, Choices, where do we start? Although I told you there's 12 months at any one time available for trading, how do we pick the ones that are really worth venturing to? Well, I mean, for my case, I trade all 12 months. So, for most other traders, I think the sensible thing is to look at the third to the fifth month range when you're considering the trade. Now, why would you choose the third to the fifth month? Well, because generally speaking, these are the most liquid uh, months that are trading at any one point of time. When I say third month, now right now the first month, first contract month would be May, okay, which basically goes off at the end of this month, end of April, right? So May being the first, June being the second, and July will be our third month. So what I'm telling you is essentially, if you're looking at a um, looking to enter the market where it's most liquid, you're looking at July, August, September, or the combination of this three months.
Interestingly, not all the other robot contracts are traded this manner. What I meant is this. Earlier, I showed you the slide about the other exchanges that offer similar, not entirely the same kind of rubber contract. For example, in Shanghai, they trade the RSS. Um, they are most actively trading the 1, 5, and the 9 contract, uh, rather the January, the May, and the September contract. Okay, that is, has always been the norm. And what it means for us is this when there is a lot of action in Shanghai, it will typically be one of these three months. And how does it affect us? Okay, I will elaborate on that later, but just keep in mind, not all the commodities are necessarily traded in this manner. Uh, but for us, in any case, for the CIMAX TSR20, uh, TSR20 rubber, you are looking at the third to the fifth contract month to be the most liquid. Now this term structure curve, uh, it looks kind of hairy, but what it's trying to describe to you is basically the month to month spread points express and where the black line is where the underlying market for the spot month is moving. Now you could see, although there's up and down, but the gradient for the orange line is rather flat. What it means is this, the term structure or rather the spread point usually follows a very consistent and narrow range. Okay, what it means for us is this. If I was convinced that, let's say, the May and June spread is going to trade within a narrow range, and if it reached an extreme today, what would I do? Uh, depending on which extreme it reaches. Okay, let's say if it reaches the downside of my estimated range, I'll be a buyer. And vice versa, if it's the other way, I will be a seller. This is another chart uh, depicting the same. Okay, so mostly it's just a reiteration of what I just mentioned. Most of this sequential month, sequential month means like the 5 versus the 6, the 6 versus the 7, etc., etc., they tend to trade within a very finite range. Okay, and especially their relation to cons consecutive uh, spreads. And this is a volume chart of the various contracts. Uh, in the sense that you look at the 2, 3 versus the 2, 4, 3, 4, 3, 5, and stuff like that. Okay, these are the actively traded one. Um, sometimes not so much, not so much in the calendar, but there are enough liquidity in the outright market. There is always an angle of play in the calendar. Okay, this next slide is for November eighteen, <laughs> December eighteen. I apologize for the dated chart. This is taken from a while back, but it serves the same purpose in any case. Now. Let me see. Let's talk about how we can put on the spread of what we just uh, advocated or in the way that we just talked about. How do I determine what is an extreme? Meaning, if, let's say if you want to mark the boundary for your ups and downs before you decide whether it's a buy or sell position. Well, like I said earlier, it's mostly based on observation. And time and tested again, you have to go back and do your own homework about this one. Okay, but let's just say for the sake of this webinar, let's say if I was able to draw a chart like that on the one month spread. Okay, now if you look at it mostly, it is actually within a very finite range of let's say mostly between minus 10 to minus 5. If I tell you right now, if the market is nearer to minus 5. Versus if it was nearer to minus 10, would that actually make you want to pull the trigger or at least make you think about how you want to trade this spread? No, of course. At minus 10, if you believe this thing will revert, for example, say around here, you'll probably go long. All right. The question next is how long would it take before it comes into the money again? Let's say it's going into a profit number. 
Well, typically in my experience, it's no longer than one to two weeks for this kind of spread when it hits an extreme. Uh, there is one word of caution though. If you look at this last part here, it's a very long line. This is as well, but let me explain what happened here. Okay, this is nearing to expiration, and that is where you need to know a little bit more about trading in commodity. Rubber is a fiscally delivered contract. You really do not want to unless you are a fiscal player to take delivery. At least I never have one to. Okay, so what I meant is this. You need to know when it becomes critical to get up. In any case, for me, the primary concern is liquidity. Say, for example, the current spot month would be May, which goes off at the end of the month. So, in essence, we got about another two weeks to go. Usually, at this point, I wouldn't be touching, or I would be touching very little of May contract. Precisely for this reason that I just explained to you, I do not want to be caught at this range where. A desperate flow because a desperate buyer wants to get out of his long obligation or a desperate seller wants to get out of his short obligation and move the market in an unpredictable way. So that is when liquidity no longer exists and the priority is just to get out and this kind of thing could happen. So remember, get out of the or don't touch the expiring contract if you can help it. In any case, the liquidity is three to fifth contract month. But if you have to, know that you really do not want to get past the second week before the expiration. Okay, this is a uh, snapshot of my trading platform. What I am attending to show you here is basically the calendar month as it appears. This is actually from a live market. Uh, of course, it's closed right now. Uh, but if you look at it, there are basically enough of that to trade around. All right, you look at the May June, even though it's expiring. I mean, the May is going to expire at the end of the month, but there are still sufficient interest, as you can see the depth of the market here. Needless to say, if you look at the other way, June, July, July, August, and further down the road, even as far as the um, November, December, sorry, the October, November in this case, you can still see a lot of uh, depth in the market. So there is no doubt of tradability. It's how we approach it. That's a question. Okay, this is a similar chart, except this is a two-month spread. Uh, two-month spread in this instance, for example, if I do one versus three, two versus four, three versus five. Now, why did I bring this up? Because when you do a spread, for example, if you look at the 5, 6, and 6, 7, and depending on how you do it, okay, you could actually look at it like a 5, 7. So meaning to say, now these are products that are listed here. That means they are actually two month, dual month calendar spread that's being listed on Cymex. Okay? Uh, generally speaking, they are less liquid than the single month calendar spread. But if you look at it yourself, these are the one that I pull up from the market. They are still pretty impressive. Now, why did I bring this up? Because the same logic that we talked about earlier about the extreme range could be applied for the dual month calendar spread as well. Okay, and even if you do not want to trade a dual month spread in that manner, you need always need to know that the HFT and the arbitrages are in this market. So. What it means is it cannot be too far away from the market. Now look at this uh, 5, 7. We are negative 27 bit, negative 24 offer. Now look at where the 5, 6 and 6, 7 is. Now 5, 7 is essentially doing one of the May and one of the July. Okay, essentially is this two press combined. So you look at the bit side, minus 1.1, minus 1.6, adding up to minus 2.7. And the offer side, minus 1.4 and minus 1.0, adding up to minus 2.4, which is pretty close to what we just saw, the 5-7 calendar spread. You see? So know that they exist. and Use them to your best advantage, depending on how you want to trade this. The starting point, for example, I'll make it simple. 
it's a range identification trading for mean reverting kind of tendency in this contract taking advantage of the fact that the term structure for this calendar is very consistent and stable butterfly spread well we talk about when we talk about spread earlier we were talking about basically one forward month one front month versus one back month in a butterfly spread what happens is you actually three months involved it's essentially still a spread say for example if we talk about three four five butterfly spread and if i want to long the butterfly i'll be longing the outside month the longing the three and the five and i'll be shorting the four well in the ratio of uh, one to one why did i mention this some of you may or may not want to venture into this but for the same reason that i introduced you to the term trading in uh, the rubber calendar spread it is actually more pronounced in the butterfly spread for the rubber okay what i meant is it is a even narrow range and a more consistent mean revision tendency only issue with a butterfly spread is it will because of its low volatility and uh, limited range movement it will also have a general tendency to be less trading opportunity compared to the one single month calendar trade so do look at it um i would love for you to go into the background work on this i can share with you how we do it but mostly by observation know that it's out there look at it and convince yourself what is your range and how you can go about doing this okay so just a reminder what i just talked about earlier what we are trying to do in the butterfly or the single month calendar spread is eventually what we are doing what we call a mean reversion trading strategy my premise is that i believe that the term structure is stable enough that when the calendar swings one way or the other to the next stream given enough time and provided it's not in the liquidity squares, uh, squeeze for the expiring contract it, it it will generally return back to or revert back to the mean okay and the other arbitrage opportunity calendar is what i have been showing you earlier how the one month calendar manifests itself and balance itself with the two month calendar the reason i did not show you how the outright look like okay well the outright basically you need two outrights to make a calendar spread so essentially the outrights will also be look at the point look upon as a synthetic calendar spread if you like only problem is this know that there are a lot of players out there and there are a lot of system traders that is going to be faster than you me and um, that probably might not be the best approach that will advise you to um, go about trading rubber in this point of time okay with that i have uh, come to the last slide of my presentation